Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 6 of the course on diffusion models. We have been looking at score matching algorithms in the past couple of lectures. Today we will be continuing that discussion and we will be looking at an algorithm called as sliced score matching. So this is a way to make you know the higher variance algorithm more efficient. So we will see you know what is the computation issue with higher variance algorithm and how the sliced score matching this uh, attempts to resolve that. So we will be looking at this paper which is titled sliced score matching. Sliced score matching. So this paper is by Okay, so, so let me write the name. So the paper is called a sliced score matching, a scalable approach to density and score estimation. Okay. And uh, this is by Yang Song Sahaj Kirk. Jiaxin Shi and Stefano Arno. So I'll post a link to this paper in the description box below. So you can read from that and uh, I'll also discuss this paper now. So first let's recall what is sliced score matching. Uh, let, let's recall what is score matching first. So score matching. So the idea is that uh, when we have some networks which can produce the unnormal less density, what we do is that we instead of estimating you know the density, what we try to learn is to we try to learn to estimate the gradients of the log probability with respect to the input x. So how to do that? So basically we define our score function stx which is defined as the gradient with respect to x log pdx and similarly we have a score function corresponding to our model which is the gradient with respect to x of log px theta and now we learn to minimize with respect to theta l of theta here l of theta is defined as half of expectation of x with respect to p theta squared norm of difference between log p dx and log p x theta, right? So in other words, I could have also written it down as mm, the half of the expectation of x from p theta the squared norm of Sx theta minus Sdx squared. So here uh, what Hyvarinen showed was that we can write this equal to um, some constant plus half of expectation of x coming from Pd s x theta squared. So this constant is nothing but the expectation of uh, s d x squared, square norm of s d x uh, plus there is another term which comes from you know the dot product between these two which is nothing but expectation of x coming from p d trace of the gradient of x s x theta. So s x theta is actually a vector but when I take the gradient of a vector I get a matrix and this is nothing but the Hessian of my log p model x or log p model tilde x, right, the anomalous distribution. Now the issue, right, what's the issue over here? So the issue over here is that, so the computation of this term, so computing, so essentially how do we do this? So basically we take samples of x coming from pd, we can estimate the score and we can also, you know, take the gradient with respect to x of the score function the model score function and then essentially we can take the trace. But how do we, what is exactly the trace of this 
gradient with respect to Sx theta, this is nothing but sum over i. Mm. Essentially, it's del by or del 2 by del xi square of p mod del tilde of x with respect to theta. Right? Or you can also equivalent to that it is sum over i del by del xi of Sx theta i. So, the i differentiate the ith component with respect to x i and I sum it up. Now, the idea is that you know if you are taking these second derivative terms, firstly I will have to compute the derivatives of p model x tilde to you know to get the square function and then for each entry of the square function I need to do a full backdrop and then I get the derivative of that entry with respect to x i and this I will have to repeat d times. So, essentially the backdrop is to be carried out d plus 1 times. So, the d, d is essentially the dimension of my input. Okay, so, I need to do this backdrop so many times. So, for example, if you know my input consists of uh, or, or basically I need to sample from the set of images, then this d could be very large. So, for example, for a 1024 cross 1024, uh, like 1024 pixels cross 1024 pixels image. Uh, it, it be, could be for example a million also right it can be even larger right if you, if you have a very high resolution image it can even be larger so the question is that how to make it more efficient this is the main question which we look at So, the idea which we look at or which this uh, uh, paper by Song et al, what, what they do is that essentially they uh, instead of you know looking at the squared norm of the difference between the square functions, they take the projection of this difference onto a random vector and then they look at the squared length of that vector. So, the idea here is that we define of theta parameters by P B. So, this is defined as half of expectation of V coming from PV, expectation of X from PB. And now what I have is V transpose less than X theta minus S D X. So, this thing squared. Okay. So, here where v coming from pv and x from pp are independent random variables. Secondly, expectation over pv, vv transpose is positive definite and expectation over pv norm v square is less than infinity. So, essentially what we are looking at is that you know we are looking at the squared length along a random vector which is coming from some distribution which is independent of x. The corresponding covariance matrix is positive definite. Note that covariance matrix is always positive semi definite but here we, all, we, are, in, uh, we are trying to enforce the condition that it is indeed positive definite. Right? And then uh, we also have that uh, the expectation of PV the squared length in expectation is finite. So, are there distributions which satisfy these conditions? Well, yes, there are. So, for example, so for example, what could be such distributions? So, independence we can always ensure, but how do we ensure conditions 2 and 3? So, one for example could be the standard normal distribution. So, we coming from a standard normal because for standard normal you can check that. The covariance matrix is indeed identity only, right, which is positive definite, definitely. And then, you know, the squared length of such a vector uh, is going to be d if it is in d dimensions. So, it is always finite. Another such distribution could be the Rade Maha distribution or Rade Maha distribution. So, here, so it is spelled as follows R A D E M A C H E R. So, here V is uniformly chosen 
amongst the two to the power d vertices of a hypercube whose vertices are either plus minus one value. Okay, so so basically for each coordinate, you know, I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick pick each coordinate to be one with probability half minus one with probability half, and this is how I'm going to get this sort of a distribution. You can check that the covariance matrix over here is indeed going to be identity again, right? Because uh, the variance of uh, mm, so let's check okay what's the covariance matrix for this distribution it's right? so basically firstly the expectation of each vi is going to be zero because it's one with probability half and minus one with probability half and uh, the square the expectation of vi square is going to be one so the variance of each vi let's so we are talking about this rade mahar mahar distribution so this way this is going to be expectation of vi square minus expectation of vi square. So this is nothing but one. So variance is one, and covariance of vi vj. That since each coordinate is chosen independently, so it's expectation vi vj minus expectation vi expectation vj. So these terms are all zero, and this is nothing but expectation of vi times expectation of vj. Why? Right, because these are independent and covariance terms are all zero. Right. So essentially, it, uh, the the expectation of VB transpose is going to be identity again, and it satisfies the conditions. And uh, the squared norm, right? So the expectation of norm V squared, uh, yeah. So that's uh, going to be D, I guess, right? Because um, what we have is that. Expectation of norm v square is sum over i expectation of v i square, which is just d. A third distribution could be v sampled uniformly from a d minus one dimensional sphere in d dimensional space. So all these distributions satisfy the condition. Okay. Uh, so, but okay, so we can define such an objective function where we satisfy some sort of conditions. Right? But what use is this to me? So, we will have to look at two questions mainly. Firstly, you know, is the objective function L theta PV the new objective which we are defining? So, is it equivalent to my original objective? Which was L of theta. So this is the first question. The second question is that, is it more efficient? Then computation of L of theta. Okay, so these are two questions which we need to look at. So, firstly, whether it's equivalent, second is is it more efficient in computation? So let's look at these two questions. So, in order to look at uh, the first question, we make the following claim first. Let's suppose if V and X are indeed independent, and uh, let's say that the covariance matrix of V is exactly identity. So then L theta PV is same as L theta. Right? So the proof is as follows that. So let's look at L theta PV. So this is nothing but expectation over B, expectation of X from PD. So let's take half outside and then I have V transpose S and X theta minus S V X. This whole thing squared. So what I can do is that I can open up the square. Okay, and what I'm going to get is that S M X theta minus s v x transpose v and v transpose s m x theta minus s v x. 
So this is a little trick which I am playing. I am writing this uh, square as product of two terms. In the first term I write uh, this difference transpose V. In the second term I write V transpose this difference. Okay. And now I have V V transpose in the middle. So what I can do is that I can take this sort of expectation of V inside. And now I use the fact that expectation of VV transpose is identity. So this is nothing but going to be identity. And overall, I'm going to get half of expectation of X from VD. Okay. And uh, S M X theta minus S D X transpose identity times S M X theta minus S D X. And this is on my original objective, which was L theta. Right? So at least, you know, in some specific extra condition, if I impose, uh, it's not even changing the objective function. So which is good. But uh, what if I want to make it more general, then actually I can even talk about the second claim, which says the following. If V and X are independent and expectation of V transpose is positive definite, then L theta PV equal to zero. If and only if SMX theta is same as STX. Okay. So let's see why. So let's go back to the form of the L theta PV, which we derived over here. Right. So basically, this is expectation of X coming from PD, SMX theta minus SDX times expectation of EV transpose times SMX theta minus SDX. So now if this term is positive definite, then essentially, okay, let, let's write it first. So L theta PV, as we had shown earlier, this is half of expectation of X from PD. SMX theta minus SDX times expectation of VV transpose times SMX theta minus SDX. Right. So suppose if this is zero, Let's suppose if this is zero, then what's going to happen? Okay, so then essentially, mm, so this is zero if and only if for all x. So since, so since p d x. Okay, so this is an assumption which you are making is that you know the data, the density is strictly positive. So the above, as in this, this thing is true if and only if for all x. I have that. Mm, the term inside expectation is zero. Actually, there can be, you know, a uh, sort of a zero probability event that it is non-zero, but we are not talking about those cases. So for almost all x, I should say, SMX theta minus SDX transpose uh, expectation of VV transpose times SMX theta minus SDX, this is equal to zero. Now this is non-negative, right? Or, or this is positive definite, right? So suppose if you know a matrix A is positive definite, then for all S, what I have is that S transpose A S. For all S non-zero, it is strictly positive. So and this is zero if and only if S is zero. If so, A is positive definite, then S transpose A S is zero if and only if S is zero. So substituting that A to be an expectation of V transpose and S to be this quantity, we have that this is zero if and only if S M X theta minus SDX equals to 0 for all X, which is phenomenal SMX theta equals to SDX for all X. So essentially, you know, this is uh, the, the job which it is doing, right? If I want to minimize, it's the same. It's the same thing which we have as we had for my original objective. Yeah, so you can just take a minute and try these calculations yourself. But the more important question is as follows that is it this is this computation more efficient 
uh, then you know my original objective. So for this thing, we first have a third claim, which is that L theta parameter s by p b, nothing but expectation of v coming from p b, expectation of x from p b, v transpose gradient with respect to x. Sm x theta v plus half of v transpose Sm x theta squared. And this expectation, okay, good. And then there is a constant term also, okay. So this constant term will come up, you know, because of that uh, V transpose S D X squared that does not have any parameter theta. So it will be constant with respect to theta. Uh, but these first two terms, so this objective is what I'm going to call as J theta P, right, plus C. So this J theta P V is the theta dependent term and then I have a constant over here. So this I'm going to prove now. Okay, so the idea is very similar to the same as, you know, the higher variance paper which uses integration by parts. So let's try to prove this. So L theta P V, this is nothing but expectation over V, expectation of X from P D, half of V transpose S M X theta minus S D X square, which is half of uh, expectation over V, expectation over X from V, D. And let's open the square, which is V transpose S M X theta squared plus V transpose S D X squared minus twice V transpose S M X theta, V transpose S D X. So essentially, this V, v transpose S T X squared term, this is just going to give me a constant. So there is a constant. And then there is half of, you know, the expectation over V, expectation over X, V transpose S and X theta squared, which is fine. And then I have minus of the expectation of V transpose S and X theta, V transpose S. So this is what we need to show now. So this we need to show that this is equivalent to this term is same as the expectation over V, expectation over X, V transpose gradient with respect to X, S M X theta V. So this is what we need to show now. So let's look at this term. So what I have is minus of uh, expectation over V. Okay. And then I have an expectation over x, so I open it up, which is the integral over all x, p dx times v transpose s n x theta, v transpose s dx dt. So I am integrating over all the dimensions of x. Now let's look at s dx. This is something which I do not have with me. So I will substitute this as the gradient with respect to x of log p dx. And the above quantity is minus expectation over V integral over X, P D X, V transpose S and X theta, V transpose, so gradient with respect to X of log P D X, so this is going to be 1 over P D X times del by del X i of P D X, then D D X. And this P D X, P D X will get cancelled. And now I have del by del xi of pdx. 
So what do I do now? I am going to do integration by parts. Right? So I have an integral over x. So I write this derivative as del by, okay, by the way, there is a sum over i. I skipped over that. There is sum over i, v i times this sort of derivative. Right? So now I am going to write it as integral over x of del by del x i of this whole thing, which is v transpose s n x theta v i del by del x i of p x, okay, and minus the derivative on the other part which is v transpose s n x theta v i and v x. And now you know if I integrate the first term, I am just going to get the boundary terms. The boundary terms are going uh, 0 because uh, basically p d x at you know, x approaching infinity, any of these x approaching plus infinity or minus infinity is 0. So this term will just go away. And what I am left with, so there are two minus signs here which makes it a plus. So, I have expectation over V. Mm. Okay, so essentially uh, what I have over here is the derivative of this entire thing and then PDX, which is without derivative. So this is integral over X, PDX. times del by del x sum over i is outside del by del x i of v i and v transpose s n x theta. So this del by del x i you know what I can do is that I can take it inside because v i and v transpose these are just constants. So essentially I can write it as del by del x i of s n x theta and sum over i v i times v transpose of this thing this I can write it as expectation over v integral over x p d x I take the summation outside and now what I have is v transpose gradient with respect to x of s n x theta v and v d x right. So this is nothing but expectation over v, expectation over x from p d, v transpose gradient with respect to x, s n x theta v. This is what we have. So overall what we have done is that we have taken this cross term, right? v transpose s m, v transpose s t. And we have transformed it to this term. We transpose gradient with respect to x, s m x theta b. This is all in expectation. So overall, what we are going to get is that essentially L of theta p v equals to j of theta p v, where j of theta parent s by p v is nothing but expectation over v, expectation over x of v transpose gradient with respect to x, s n x theta v plus half of v transpose s n x theta square. And now actually I can do you know an efficient computation. If I want to compute this thing, I actually need to compute the gradient just uh, you know just twice. So essentially first I can you know get uh, the log probability, log, log unnormalized probability x comma theta. I take the gradients once with respect to x, I get s m x theta. And uh, once then what I do is that I take v transpose s m x theta, right? That is a scalar and then just uh, pass, pass it again through backprop. I take its gradient and then just I take the dot product with v. So we can essentially compute this efficiently. Let me just write it down. So we need to compute the term v or expectation over v expectation over x v transpose gradient with respect to x s m x theta v. 
So how do we do this? So to sample an x. So we we'll, basically we we'll need to uh, sample, take a sample average over multiple values of x and v. So sample x and v, and then essentially what we are going to do is that um, estimate. So how we get one single sample? So we are going to um, we are going to estimate um, essentially log p mod x comma theta. So backdrop to get gradient with respect. Okay, so this is a normalized log p m tilde and gradient with respect to x of log p m tilde x comma theta. So this is defined as. Six theta. Now we compute. We transpose s x theta, and backdrop to get gradient with respect to x. So we transpose s x theta, right? And this is nothing but we transpose gradient of x s x theta, right? And then I take a dot product with v, and that gives me this objective. So this is one sample, and I need to repeat it for multiple such samples. So essentially, what we be having is that we'll be having samples of x i, i from one to m, and then for all i, I get samples v i j j from one to n, right? And then we can estimate it as. One over m n sum over i j v i j gradient with respect to x of s n x theta v i j plus half of v i j transpose s n x theta squared. Right. And also in the special case, when expectation of v v transpose is identity, which is for the case of you know the normal distribution or a de Mahar distribution. In that case, we can essentially uh, you know the second term can be written as. Uh, so the first term is still the same. Plus half of I can just you know take the S M X theta squared now also. This also you can do, right? So this will give you a low variance estimate. Right. So uh, that was it for the case of uh, the sliced score matching paper. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll we start we will start looking at uh, you know we'll we'll start looking at a paper wherein you know uh, for for the score sort of estimation, you know we what we do is that we noisify it at multiple scales and then. Uh, we try to denoisify it, and um, so that that's you know very similar to the previous paper which we saw in the previous lecture, and that will pay way again for the diffusion models, right? So uh, it will pay way you know for the connection with diffusion models and also for the idea of classifier guidance. So we'll uh, look at that idea in the next lecture. Okay, yeah, thanks. Bye.